to Adventuring for Knowledge. This is Adventure Call number one. Guess what? This is Adventure Call number two. And what comes after two, Manny? Is it three? Yep, you got it. It's Adventure Call number three. Last, Last call. call. Welcome to our podcast. It's Adventure Time. Hello, everyone. This is Tate Four, <laughs> <laughs> and we're live again, again, and again. And again. <laughs> so, we're here today with Paula and Aaron, owners mm-hmm. and operators of Zero Waste Emporium, for the second time. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello, everyone. Um, last time we recorded it was an unfortunate event. We lost the recording, but we are so thankful that you're here again. Of course. I know it takes a lot of time off your day and everything, but... It's our pleasure. Yes. Thank you so much. We adapt and overcome. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Over and over and over again. <laughs> 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 all right. So um, I want to start by knowing what you guys are all about uh, individually, what your childhoods were, um, how you are becoming the persons you, you are. Well, my English is very intense right now. I'm so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so where did you come from? Yeah. Where did you grow up? How did you meet? How old are you? Uh, the basic information of yourselves. <laughs> but we we want to know. We know, but our listeners want to know. Sounds good. So I'm Paula, and uh, I grew up in Ecuador in South America, high up in the Andes. And uh, when I was 10, I decided I wanted to be a marine biologist and wanted to study killer whales. And back in Ecuador, everybody thought that I was crazy because up in the Andes, nobody wants to be a marine biologist. But I was stubborn enough that I made it through high school and came to Canada uh, to go to university. And I was a marine biologist for 15 years. I was in animal care and I absolutely loved it Um, until a couple of years ago when I met Naren at the aquarium. Where everything I was working, changed. And everything changed. <laughs> That's right. We started dreaming. <laughs> dreaming together. Yes. Uh, yeah. So I'm, uh, my name is Naren, and I started out uh, in Ontario. Um, born and raised. I'm happy to not have to deal with the snow or, you know, at least four months of it anymore. <laughs> really I can drive to the yeah. snow and then away it's again, an which is Victoria. perfect. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, but I always grew up um, around the water. Yeah. So always had that infinitive love of, of water, um, and that uh, that draw to the uh, to the, the other, other world. Powerful. Yeah, for yeah. sure. There's so, so much life down there. Yeah, and then uh, went off to uh, university um, and studied aquaculture, and um, worked uh, at fish farming for a while, uh, which was really cool to uh, to experience that because I got to live on one of the farms uh, in Ontario and uh, and raise fish um, that made their way up to Manitoulin Island, mm. uh, which was really neat. Um, and then, um, yeah, after that, I did a little bit of culinary training, uh, got my uh, chef certification, and then worked in that field for a while. So I definitely have a, a love for food and, and creating things that are, you know, beautiful and, and tasteful. Hope is going to uh, love I can. this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've always had a, a passion for food as well, um, which, of course, drives all of us, right? So we yeah. all have to, to eat. And then, uh, yeah, after that, I sailed around the world for, uh, for nine plus years in the, in the Navy. And again, my love for the water kind of continued and adventure and whatnot. So, and then, yeah, um, yeah, I met Paula, and then uh, we started, uh, like I said, dreaming together and, and coming up with uh, ways that we could conquer, uh, conquer, conquer the world together. The world. So, yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to put it, yeah. conquering the world together. Yeah, exactly. yeah it's no fun doing it alone. <laughs> and how did you guys meet? Uh, we met at the aquarium. So I was working at the aquarium up in Sydney uh, for quite a few years, and Naren came one day with. Um, yeah, I brought my son. Yeah, with the son. And ah, I used, I the used him. Oh yeah, the yeah. wingman. Yeah. Well, I didn't have a puppy, so I brought my son. <laughs> so. It's either a kid or a puppy. It's the best yeah. wingman. That's right. And yeah, through my study of, of fish and and Paula being a marine biologist, we just kind of clicked and connected, and she went uh, and. Uh, Showed me the, the back room where all the filters are kept, and I just, from there on in, it was it. 
All the uh, fish technology really hooked me. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that is awesome. But it, it, it started with the love and passion for, for the same driving force and power which is the ocean yeah right? common Absolutely. goals common very goals. common goals for yeah. sure so absolutely yeah. both of us have always had a really close connection to the ocean and um yeah both of us are divers and absolutely love the wildlife that surround us and and we know that living on an island everything that we do directly impacts those animals right and, yeah. and everything around us and so yeah, little by little, it kind of um, drove us to uh, to start reducing our waste and thinking a little bit more about the environment around us and eventually came up with the idea of opening a zero-waste grocery store. Yeah, yeah, you got to protect huge what sticking. you love. So, And I saw this firsthand yesterday. Yeah, I'm just starting to dive in myself. Mm -hmm. And I went down and I saw for the first time a tire. Oh, yeah. And it just broke my heart. In the middle of nowhere. Yeah, just for no tire. good reason. And no one knows where it came from. It was like, it was a feeling that I, I can't explain. It was like, wow. Yeah, like, it's what's coming when you're this far? diving around and you see shopping carts and, and like the big bread, bread baskets. And oh. Just waste down there. And where, it just doesn't belong. Where do you think all this waste comes from? Like, all... It just spills from landfills? Um, container ships and stuff like around that? Around here, yeah, it has to do a lot with uh, the amount of boat traffic that we yeah. have in our area, right? And we have a lot of currents, so, and we have some major rivers that do empty out into Harris Strait and, and Georgia Strait, right? And so anything that's going into those rivers eventually ends up in the ocean, and everything that is coming from the Pacific as well eventually will make its way into our, our area, our yeah. pristine little area, right? So... Um, yeah, it's all, it's all man-made and it's, it's all us bringing it in. So now we have to figure out a way to stop bringing it in and, and to clean up what the mess that we've left behind. Right. Yeah. So your love for the ocean and this passion for wanting to make that change. So you had this idea and passion growing with inside of you. What was your first step of action towards what you guys are doing now with opening a zero waste store? Yeah, so it started as a personal journey to reduce our own household waste. So um, Paul and I were always watching documentaries and learning and, you know, nobody likes school, but every, everybody loves learning things, right? Yes, so, definitely. So um, even as an adult, you want to expand your horizons and, and learn new things, right? So we watched a documentary called Trashed. Um, Trashed. Yeah, it's a documentary, uh, 2013 13. with Jeremy Irons, and it just mm -hmm. really opened our eyes to garbage never really goes away. People put it at the curb, and then it goes somewhere, but it never goes away. Out of sight, out of mind. Exactly right. So really put into perspective some of the hard truths that a lot of us are at least privileged enough that we don't need to deal with, but as a one community world, mm -hmm. it affects everybody. Right. So we watched that documentary and then we were sitting in bed and I think, you know, we turned to each other and said, that's, that's it. We need to do more. Right. So, um, there was a zero waste grocery store on Salt Spring Island called green. Um, and, uh, I think that day, I think we finished the documentary <laughs> and that day just made like an impulse, <laughs> like let's get in the car. A, Salt Springs only a 30 I minute ferry it. ride, went it. over, checked it out and bought our first bamboo toothbrush. And then from there it just became yeah. an obsession about how far we could take it. You know, what else can we reduce? What can we live without? What can we do without? So yeah, it just started as a personal journey. Um, and then we realized that in order to make a true impact, we needed to share it with everybody. So we put together um, a little online store and a resource page um, and then threw it out into the World Wide Web. Um, and we took our philosophies to farmer's markets along with some of the products that we had uh, been using ourselves and kind of fell in love yeah. with. Farmers and their response awesome was that, overwhelming. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, we got the same response out of everybody that was passionate about it, just like us is, you know, do you guys have a storefront? Where's your storefront? <laughs> when you guys opened a storefront? They held you accountable. <laughs> it, that's it. Yeah, for sure. So, um, and then one thing led to another. And I always say the business kind of started uh, and grew without any consent um, from it just us. Happened. It just happened. Because so it's meant to be. It was autonomous, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So. It's needed. Very mm -hmm. much needed. Um, so you mentioned trash. Where can people find it? Uh, Netflix or how? Uh, trash uh, is a documentary that you can find through the library. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and there is a website uh, for it, but you do need to download it and pay per, uh, per view. Um, but it is a really impactful film. It, it shows you how garbage is dealt with around the world, both mm -hmm. in um, first world countries and third world countries. And here in Canada, we're very much privileged that we have the resources to be able to deal with garbage and with recycling, right? But the rest of the world doesn't necessarily have those resources. Yeah. And a lot of the garbage is either being buried or dumped into waterways or straight into the ocean, right? So Or incinerated. Um, or incinerated. And um, we always think that incineration would be a good thing because you can produce energy from incineration. Mm -hmm. Or now there's a new company that is actually making uh, diesel fuel from plastics. Wow. Yeah. But the consequences of it and, and of just burning plastics and the amount of chemicals that are being released into the air and the the impact of those chemicals um is quite devastating it and is. uh yeah they they were comparing it uh to some of the um chemical bombs that were being yeah thrown throughout the world during um during world war one world war two right and so yeah, some of those impacts can be really really bad so incineration is not yeah. a solution and i uh i I read the Anthropocene is a book, mm -hmm. and it's in our resources tab. And in there, it mentions how all of these chemicals that get released from this incineration, it gets washed in the ocean, so it ends up in the oceans anyways. If you are to take a sample of anywhere in the ocean, there will be parts per million of plastic in there. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, so plastic is, is one of those inert objects that doesn't... Um, compose or decompose in nature it just yeah. breaks down in, into smaller pieces yeah. and the problem with plastic um, in itself is it's absorbent so it will resor absorb all of those toxic chemicals that are yeah. released into the ocean yeah. and then of course those little pieces are consumed by small animals and then those small animals are consumed by bigger animals which is leading up to us in the food chain and then eventually we eat everything and yeah. the oh science God. the science now is showing that that it is very probable that almost 100% of us have micro toxic plastic within our intestinal system right now. I so, didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know that. It makes yeah. total sense. Yeah. In our lungs, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's not, you know, it's it's not the mercury in the tuna that we really need to worry about anymore. <laughs> it's all of the the, the chemicals that are that absorbed really by plastics and, and plastics in themselves are, are are toxic, right? So yeah. um and yeah, we're consuming them without even knowing it. Um, salt is a big one, right? A lot of microplastics end up in salt through desalinization of the ocean, right? Mm -hmm. So it's impossible to filter them all out and we ingest it and then it's causing hormone disruption uh, issues within us as well. So yeah, it's a huge, uh, huge problem. Yeah. So last time we talked, we talked about the myth of recycling. Yeah. And this one word that stuck with me was downcycling. And I was like, ah, oh, downcycling. Can you touch on that? Can you Explain explain to our listeners what that is. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. So um, recycling literally means to remake something from what it was before. Right. So this glass mason jar can be turned into another glass mason jar, right? That is the true meaning of recycling. But the way that we use it in our society is a bit of a myth because we're using it um, in the sense of plastic, right? We we put a lot of plastic into a blue bin, it goes somewhere, and then all of a sudden, magically, you have another water bottle, right? right? But the truth is, is that plastic cannot be recycled. That water bottle cannot be made into another water bottle. Every time you melt down plastic, you lose the quality of the product, and it cannot be made into what it was before, but it needs to be made into something of lower quality. So it's not recycled, but downcycled. And most plastics can only be recycled two, maybe three times, and that's it. After that, they have to go to the, to the landfill, right? Um, so there's a lot of materials that, that kind of go through that, where they can just be downcycled once or twice, and then they're garbage. Well, there's other materials like glass and metal that can be recycled infinitely. But they're more, more costly to recycle, right. and therefore we don't use them as much. Because recycling is a business just like anything costly else. Costly financially, not costly on... The environment yes mm. yeah okay i see yeah because it's more energy intensive to to recycle these materials more energy intensive and also they're usually heavier so transportation yeah. is more intensive um and it's it's a lot easier to just break down plastic and make it into a new thing yeah. right and uh and as a business recycling uh kind of benefits from recycling faster yeah. right and so if it takes a little bit longer and it's heavier to transport and it's a little more costly not many companies are going to be willing to actually do it yeah and yeah. 
Oh, and, and not to mention that most things that are recyclable don't end up in the recycling bin, right? So yeah. you get these potential, um, you know, coffee cups with their lids that could be recyclable. Nobody walks around with an empty cup, uh, cup looking for a recycling bin. It goes in the first trash bin that they find, right? Yeah. And that just ends up right into the landfill. So, yeah. Let's and talk about coffee cups, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there's a, there's always the issue as well of people not really knowing what is recyclable and what isn't, yes. right? So we think of coffee cups as being recyclable, right? Because they're paper and they have a plastic lid and it seems all good, right? That's what I thought. The last time we talked, I had a coffee cup that I was going to recycle until I found out I could not recycle this coffee cup. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, not, not recyclable. So coffee cups are lined with either plastic or a heavy wax on the inside so they can hold hot liquids without disintegrating in your hand right and because of that um, they are very hard to recycle and usually they're not recyclable at all and then the other problem is the lids that they put on them um, especially the black lids are not recyclable because the machines the lasers that separate plastics in the sorting facilities cannot recognize the black plastic and so they send it directly to the landfill I remember you saying there was a number on the plastic that designated as non-recyclable what, what was that number so what, there's what there's the seven number? numbers mm -hmm. right um and you will find that in almost every piece of plastic mm -hmm. uh, made so if it is recyclable it'll have a number and that number sets it up in a into a different category as to how recyclable it is or not mm -hmm. um and usually number one and two tend to be the most recyclable materials um, and occasionally you'll get i believe it's number five as well that is recyclable but then you'll get things like um styrofoam and it has a recycling number, but nobody really recycles it. Yeah, there are no facilities never, that recycle yeah. it, right? For example of that, I was at the bottle depot yesterday and I see in the corner, it was just massive pile of styrofoam. Yeah. And I went, went there twice yeah. over a span of two weeks. Yeah, styrofoam. It it's just it's just sitting there. Styrofoam cannot become anything else. Yeah. Once it's styrofoam, that's, that's it, it's styrofoam. So it can't be even downcycled. However, there is a market for it. Yeah. So uh, a lot of the styrofoam is being shipped to Spain, where it's being compressed and turned into picture frames. Oh, interesting. So it's not really recycled. It's just being compressed and turned into something else, something cheap that you buy at the dollar store that is going to last you a few months and then it's going to end up in the garbage. So it's being downcycled. So it's being downcycled. Down and reused. And reused, yeah. right? So it's being reused, but it's not an ideal product. It's, mm -hmm. it's, some, it's not something that is going to be durable, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and just the transportation of sending all of the styrofoam Ugh. from here all the way to Spain to be pressed down into little frames that nobody's really going to use and then brought back to us for a cheaper cost. It, the logic behind it is just not there, right? Yeah, it's just you're just burning fuel and lead and all this other waste right. <laughs> that we yeah. dig from the earth. We're contributing to the economy, though. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The machine. Yeah, yeah, the machine, the industrial <laughs> machine. Yeah. 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 Um, last time we talked about the difference between biodegradable and compostable. Can yeah, we did. That? So that, uh, you know, leads from our recycling talk. Yeah. Right. So a lot of times, um, compostable and biodegradable are used, um, ubiquitously, right. Or they're interchangeable. Um, and if somebody thinks something is biodegradable, they think, oh, great. It'll just break down and return to the earth. So what I'm purchasing is, is perfectly fine. But unfortunately, um, the term biodegradable just means that it will degrade in nature from anywhere from 10 to 10,000 years and it will just break down into smaller pieces and won't actually return to the earth. And it just end up in our landfill. In, into micro pieces of what it or, was, or right? Or ocean or environment. Yeah, everywhere, the forest, right? anywhere, right? Yeah, so something being compostable means that it will return to the earth and if you wanted to plant a tree in that location, then that material will help enable thrive, that tree yeah. to grow, right? It yeah, will right. return to the earth into its elemental form, mm -hmm. right? right? So biodegradable um, does not mean that these items will return to the earth and benefit anything. But so, compostable does. Compostable will, yeah. However, there is still um, a little bit of greenwashing around the word compostable. Because yeah. again, um, there's a lot of companies that are making bioplastics or compostable plastics, right? And again, you have that word compostable there and you think, oh great, this is going to return to the earth. However, those materials are only compostable under specific conditions in industrial facilities or in lab conditions, not even industrial facilities, but in a lab, right? Um, and they won't necessarily break down 
just out in your backyard compost or out in the ocean. So you'll see a lot of the, the compostable plastic bags that you're supposed to use in your compost bin. Those ones will never break down completely. And when they go to the industrial facilities here, there's only one facility on the island that will actually take them. And when they go through the process after about 45 days, they just get sifted out and sent to the landfill because they don't break apart. They just break into smaller pieces and then they just get picked up. Or they up. just kind of melt. Yeah. Right. You'll just have a melted, you know, plastic fork. And these landfills are everywhere. Not in our side. Yeah. <laughs> but in other parts of the world, there's cities. They're in the well, middle of cities. They're in right. the middle. They are cities. Yeah. And yeah. people go and they, they, they sort through other people's garbage in order to get little, little pieces of useful things that they can take to certain companies and yeah well, that's why watching documentaries and reading books with regards to this topic it's very eye-opening to yeah. see where everything goes yeah so there's very ingenious things that people are doing with landfills um especially specifically after they are full right um but that's not a solution right no. so um you know making excuses on why something works is not uh, a solution to the problem right so we always say that the best way to avoid something is to, is to um, just refuse it in the first place, yeah. right? So if you know that you can find an alternative or live without it, then refusing is your best option and it's the best alternative to help, you know, save this world that we live in. So I remember we were talking about the landfill on our island. Mm -hmm. well, we have land, one. Right? We have one landfill and I remember the light. I know the, the number it was 32 years until mm -hmm. it's the it's lifespan of until it's full yeah and then after that then, what? I, then what yeah so there's no plan b right now so heartland does own a lot of land and this is here in the island in vancouver yeah yep. yeah so the chosen. heartland landfill um is the only landfill for lower vancouver island so there is another one up in nanaimo mm -hmm. um so technically we have two major landfills the one in nanaimo won't take anything from outside of nanaimo pretty much because yeah. it's already almost full and the same with the one in victoria so the one here in Victoria only has 32 years left uh, in, in its lifespan, right? And so that's one of the reasons why a few years ago um, they decided that no more organic matter could go into the landfill was to try to slow down how much was actually going into the landfill and how much um, methane gas was being produced yeah. from all the organic waste that was in there, right? And so after those 32 years, there is no other option. And right now, anything that cannot go into our landfill is being shipped to the mainland mm. and then from the mainla mainland it gets shipped to asia <laughs> oh, this kills so, really yeah just all so, this transportation that is needed to just transfer our garbage is ridiculous and exactly. then it, and it's just going to end up in another landfill in another country and mm. potentially in a country that can't deal with it properly right no. that doesn't have the resources that we have here in canada to be able to deal with it yeah. so as, as an island community, we should be self-sustaining to the point where our garbage is dealt with right here, yeah, right? Yeah, but that means being really, really conscious about the garbage that we do produce. Yeah. So I just want to quickly touch on this because I know a lot of people buy clothing. <laughs> yeah. And there is a lot of waste in clothing. So can you touch on what is the least wasteful pieces of clothing that people can buy out of what materials? Yeah, clothing's a, a fast industry, right? If you've worn something for four months, you're already out of style, right? So there's such a push to get clothing turned around so quickly and things are made so cheaply now that they just, they're not meant to last, right? It's that yeah. whole planned obsolescence that we could dive down to as well. But um, yeah, clothing in general, um, making smarter choices. Yeah, so um, buying uh, clothing that is quality made and if you can find it, made with natural materials. So things like cotton, hemp, uh, linen, those kinds of things will last you a lot longer. Mm -hmm. um, and even though sometimes the process to make those fabrics is not ideal, in the long run is a much better option than buying polyester clothes or something that is made out of plastic and is meant to last you six yeah. months right so um and then the other thing is going back to what our grandparents used to do which is repair everything yeah. so if you have a hole in your sock just fix it 
yeah. and keep on fixing it until your sock <laughs> falls apart, right? And the same with your jeans or your sweaters, right? Yeah. We can keep on fixing it and buying secondhand as well is another really good option. Um, so there's, there's nothing better than buying something that is already made because you're not demanding more resources to be you know, used up to create a new object, right? If there is something out there that you like that, you know, maybe it is a brand name and you can buy it for a lot cheaper, but it's a good piece of clothing that is going to last a while, then it's better. It's a much better option to buy it secondhand than to go and buy something brand new. Right. So, so far in our conversation, I've heard you use a bunch of R words. Yeah. So I've heard reuse, <laughs> I've heard repair, refuse and recycle can you tell me all the r words and the order of them and so, what, what, how and how we should approach them and i view this like a kind of like a solution so we're talking more of the problem right let's, let's take because be, before to the before solution. our last conversation i only knew of three reduce yeah. reuse recycle and those are the ones soft, yeah those right? are the ones you learn in grade seven right? yeah <laughs> so, reduce, reuse recycle yeah, it's, yeah. it's huge right <laughs> um but it doesn't so again those are just um band-aids solutions right they don't actually address the problem yeah right they just address the issue after it's been created right so yeah so in the world of kind of zero waste living there are six r's and um the first one that you start with with is refusal so if you know that uh you don't need this item right um or you're gonna have to throw it in the garbage then you should refuse it right off the bat you shouldn't even take it because if you don't have it in your house or your person um, then you don't need to deal with it, right? Mm -hmm. And so. by refusing it, you're also telling companies, you know, I'm not willing to pay money for something that is going to go into the, into the garbage, right? Something that is not going to last long or just extra packaging that I don't need, yeah. right? So by refusing, not only are you kind of stopping the supply chain in its tracks, but you're also sending a clear message to the companies that are producing all that extra stuff that we don't need and saying, I'm not willing to put my dollars into your company anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm moving away from that, yeah. right? So refusing is definitely your best tool. Uh, when it comes to just trying to reduce the amount of waste that you're producing. Yeah. And when you when you are trying to refuse, is there a mantra that you guys started saying? Like, I do not need this. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, well, it, it's much more empowering um, to be that individual uh, that says, you know, I don't, I don't need it, right? So rather than looking at it as a problem and saying, oh man, I, I can't, I can't have this anymore. Or I, I can't, I can't get this for myself. You know, take another approach to it and say, I don't need this, or I'm choosing not to, to choose this product. Yeah, right. So yeah, take, take onus and some pride on, on the fact that, you know, using willpower, um, against, you know, yeah. consuming things, um, which in the end don't fulfill us. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah, take that, uh, Take that onus and that uh, that empowerment of saying, you know what, I don't, I don't need it. So it's yeah. that I I want it between, do I really need it? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And we're constantly bombarded by the media to consume and yes. to always buy more and to always, mm. you know, you're, right. what right. you have is not good enough. Always you need in more, your face. Right? And it's always it in your face. Social media is the worst factor of that. Exactly. And the we're constantly comparing yeah. to, you know, what do they have and why don't I have it? And oh, I, I'm not in fashion anymore. Therefore, I'm not good enough. Right. But if you start changing that around, right, all of a sudden they don't have control over you anymore. It's you that has all the control and you can decide what you do need, what you do want and how you go about your life without having them constantly tell you you're not right. good enough. And you're right? telling them through your actions. Yeah. Yeah. So awesome. the one thing that has been hugely beneficial in our lives is because we don't consume as much, we're able to experience more. And that's where memories are built. Yeah. Right. I don't remember the beautiful pair of jeans I bought seven years ago. <laughs> right. I remember, you know, the diving trips and, you know, um, going experiences Scotland, of or, going to Scotland know. or, you know, having that money because I'm not consuming, saving that money that you would be consuming with and turn it into life experiences. Right. Yeah. So that is huge. Yeah. Because a lot of people spend a lot of money on consumable <laughs> products. And I yeah. think by mapping it out that way, a lot of people will be more motivated to go zero waste because you're saving money. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right? And people want money. Yeah. Because they're, they're basically, let's, t let's touch on this subject because what you're buying is basically the brand, the packaging. If you, are, if you really need something, uh, you guys mentioned last time, 
uh, the first steps that you took was to get a sewing machine. Is that what? Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> once we decided that we wanted to go zero waste, we started looking at some of the garbage that we were producing. And uh, Naren is a really big coffee drinker, yeah, and so we had a lot coffee. of coffee bags, yeah. right? So we started um, trying to figure out how to get coffee beans without the packaging. And for that, we needed bags. So we started making cloth bags, but neither one of us really knew how to sew. So we bought <laughs> a sewing machine from 1929, I believe it is. Wow. So it's, it's an metal and wood. That's it. <laughs> as simple as it gets. And yeah, taught ourselves how to sew and sewed ourselves a couple of bulk bags and went to one of the coffee roasters in town and said, hey, can you put the beans in my bag mm -hmm. and at first they looked at us a little weird and then they said yes and we just kept on doing that more and more so but that was a little win for you and i know right. you remember that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. it's all about the it little wins it was a huge right? win yeah at first it was like oh yeah that, that was cool and then it was like that was awesome they actually <laughs> did it for us right and then we started pushing the envelope to see how many other places would allow us to bring our yeah. own bags or our own containers right and yeah, you start kind of celebrating those little wins and it's it, it becomes a challenge um, to see how far you can push it yeah. and it's pretty fun. Yeah, so there again, you know, we, we refuse to, you know, buy coffee in plastic bags, right? So we had to find an alternative and that was another thing. We got rid of our garbage can in the house and that forces you to make, you know, resolutions yeah. right that, that you Thinking actually need to, box, to yeah. stick to right because you're at the grocery store and you're like i can't do anything with this packaging after i get home so i can't, <laughs> I can't not, I'm, I'm, I'm not taking now. it i'm choosing not to take it because yeah. i know that i can't deal with it yeah. so what are my alternatives right and, and there's alternatives to everything it'd be hard pressed for you to give me an item that i couldn't find you an alternative for right so yeah again Going back to our, our six R's, right? Refusal is, is the first one, right? For sure. So Definitely. before we continue on the first R's, I'm glad you brought up the little wins because that's what stuck with me <clears throat> is the little wins and then acknowledging the little wins. So after our, our talk last Sunday, I went out for dinner and I, I tested my girlfriend. I was like, okay, so do you want to eat in? We decided on pho. Do you want to eat in or take out? She's like, oh, let's take out. I was like, no. Wrong, wrong, wrong answer. Because the whole day I've been preaching to her about our talk and yeah. telling people. I think I told like four people. I I was at Fairways as well, and I talked to the cashier for five minutes about the zero waste and why we we weren't buying this product. Oh, sorry, we're not going to buy this because there's a bunch of plastic on it. <laughs> I then explained and talk, told them about you guys and whatnot. Anyway, so we we chose to to eat it. Yeah. Instead nice. of having all these styrofoam boxes, plastic fork, paper or plastic bag and whatnot. Yeah. And I felt so good about it that I didn't have to take those things and dispose of them in a trash can. And I just had to eat that my food awesome. on, a, on a plate. It's awesome. Yeah. Little wins. It makes you feel empowered. Mm -hmm. And B, it forces you to slow down, which I think in today's society is so important for mental health. The fact that we need to slow down every once in a while. We're so busy and we're go, 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 right? Um, it's just not healthy yeah. for, for us or our mental state or, or our relationships either, right? So sitting down and enjoying a meal, even if it's not in the house with your significant other or even with yourself, right? Yeah. Um, allows you just to, to get lost in your head a little bit, right? Or have a conversation. So, you know, whether it's a, a coffee or a, or a meal, right? Sit down and, and take the time. The world will wait. Totally. The world will wait. Yeah. 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 I feel like a very powerful way of looking at zero waste, like you mentioned, it's about the little ones, little challenges, mm -hmm. like you mentioned last time. What are the little challenges that you guys So I heard the tooth, the toothbrush, the, the, um, the coffee, the coffee, <laughs> yeah, yeah. coffee cups. We have stainless steel containers that we bring uh, everywhere as well. So yeah. we'll bring stainless steel containers to um, the butcher when we get meat or yeah. to the deli if we're getting a salad or when we go out to eat um, or if we know there's a chance that we'll have to eat out, then we bring our stainless steel container with us. And 
um, you know, Paula throws it in her handbag because, you know, women walk around with massive handbags and it's very convenient, right? Very so, convenient. Yeah, I know, sure. yeah. I'm like, yeah. hey, babe, can you, can you hold this? <laughs> Let me, I'll get the door for you. Can you hold this? <laughs> um, and, uh, and yeah, we just have them at our disposal. Yeah. Um, or you leave them in the car and you go get them if you're not parked far away. And yeah, so we bring our stainless steel, clean, steel containers everywhere and we put takeout in them. We put salads in them or, you know, yeah. protein yeah. For, for the day, whether it be, you know, meat or tofu or whatever your uh, whatever your poison so yeah, yeah. so yeah. being cool. prepared is key right so let's get back to the six hours oh yeah right six hours. so because <laughs> there's so much info and we're all stoked about it especially myself because I'm practicing in my mind zero waste so refuse yeah yeah so that was an example of myself refusing takeout yeah is the That's easiest fabulous. one yeah right yeah and I remember and it was sardines Gabby had sardines and we were in the lineup and I was telling Gabby like <laughs> You gotta look at that package. <laughs> There's so much plastic on that package. <laughs> and she's looking at me, and she has it. It was just a day of me just preaching about this. And so she yeah, was like, yeah. okay. And so she refused and went, okay. So refuse. That is awesome. First refuse. time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then reduce, right? Um, we all have things. We all have a lot of things. Do we really need a lot of things, right? So if you can reduce what you do need, um, it really makes you conscious of what you do have. It makes you take care of what you have a lot more. Um, And then you're not demanding as many resources, right? So do you really need seven pairs of jeans or can you do away with just two, right? Um, And try to buy items that have multiple purposes. So don't don't buy an Instapot because it only has one purpose. Mm, you got a lot of arguments. <laughs> you got a lot of arguments on that one, but yeah, yeah. But, but just reducing your overall consumption, yeah, yeah. right. It'll it'll free you as well, right. When you don't feel bogged down by by purchasing all the time, or, yeah. or you know, just look around your your house and and on your person and just see what you can reduce. And hope does this right. all the time, and sometimes it drives me crazy. <laughs> Every month she goes around and she takes away. We don't need this. We don't need this anymore. Let's give it away to someone that can use it and will use it, and we will never have to ever buy it again. Yeah. yeah. And, and I remember last time it was you that throw, throws away stuff, and you were the one that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I just, yeah, I, I, I love getting rid of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a hard time getting getting rid of stuff, mostly because if there is something that I have that I know that I can't repair and that I can't donate anymore. I have a really hard time just throwing it into the landfill. It's it just, yeah. yeah, it hurts. It hurts to throw it away. And then there's other times when it's like, oh, you know, I may use this in six months because it's winter time right now. And in the spring, I'll probably use it. And then in the spring, I forget. And then I say, oh, no, I'm going to use it in the winter again. And right. I just keep on thinking that I'm going to use things and that in the end I'm not. Yeah, or you have seven yeah. wooden spoons and six spatulas, right? You it, you're only cooking one. one meal, right? So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one meal at one point in the day. So you probably only need one wooden spoon for so that meal. You need a good dishwasher for that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I am the dishwasher. You are the who dishwasher. Wash, who washes the dishes? Um, if, if I cook, she'll typically wash dishes <laughs> typically, typically. <laughs> yes i'm usually the one that does unless she's working on emails she's doing you yeah know, doing financing <laughs> but i'll gladly do dishes <laughs> yeah yeah I, I i am this washing machine so we yeah. can we can reduce our spatula and yeah, 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 yeah. exactly yeah. so yeah. yeah so we got so, so we, refuse yeah reduce yeah yeah reuse reuse yeah so you already have a lot of stuff at home right so reuse it Keep on reusing it. Use it as many ways that you can, right? So um, if you have, you know, a mason jar that you can't use anymore as a mason jar, you maybe can use it as a flower vase or as a planter pot or as a water, you know, glass, right? There's always things that can be reused for more than what they were originally meant to be, right? right? Mm -hmm. So reuse it as much as you can until you can't reuse it anymore. At that point, repair it. Number four. (laughs) Yeah, repair Right? Yeah. Now there's a lot of joy in, in, in fixing things, especially if you've invested money into something that is potentially, you know, costly yeah. to um, have to get a new one, right? Then repair it, right? Yeah. So, and you know. Then you can do this yourself or you can take it to repair it to somewhere else. Yeah. With a Absolutely. professional. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. I, you know, if you can't do it, you know, I had, a, I had a coat that needed mending and I brought it into a professional and then he repaired it. I yeah. had shoes that need to be resold, right? So beautiful shoes. I love them, right? And then, yeah, rather than get rid of them, just resold them. So, 
I grew up in a, a generation where it was the coolest thing as a kid to take things apart and see how they worked, right? And then try to put them back together. So, you know, long lost is that kind of generation, I think, on, <laughs> right. on today's youth. That's still, but, totally. I still do that sometimes. But, yeah. but re- like, what are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Re- repairing things, right? I mean, and it all leads to the curiosity in which we should all be enthralled with, right? How yeah. things work and, and understanding, right? We, we're in a society where, you know, as, as frightening as it is, we don't really need to know anything anything yeah nobody needs to know anything these days because that's all just at your fingertips right right? we're we're a a generation of 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 no knowers right you don't need to retain anything so i mean going back to to learning things and and learning how things work and how to repair them i think is 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 a crucial crucial thing for and for everybody you become a more skillful person and it broadens your knowledge about a thousands of things yeah. and it can also save you a ton of money right yeah. like if your screen on your phone cracks don't throw it out change it yeah, yeah it took me two days to get a screen on on amazon and i learned how to change the screen on my iphone in two minutes on youtube oh, YouTube right? has everything. Perfect. and then it makes you feel so empowered because all of a sudden i did something that i would have never thought of doing and it worked and it worked really well and it cost me a whole six dollars Oh, wow. Right? Instead of a new iPod or a new iPhone, That's right? So six hundred dollars. Exactly. And your phone's just gonna end up in the landfill. Exactly. It was a little so, win. It was. It, was it really was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I was they, pretty proud of that one. <laughs> take proud of those little wins. If you are if you are beginning your zero waste adventure, it is very empowering, it is very rewarding to set yourself challenges, doing them, and then wow. As well yeah. as I remember you guys saying, acknowledging that no one's perfect. Yes, that is key. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So. Zero waste at this point in our society is close to impossible. But it is close to be impossible as well, right? Mm-hmm. And so um, there will be days that you won't remember to you know, tell your waiter that you don't need a straw or that you will grab something without realizing that there's packaging inside of the cardboard box, right? So there will be days that are not perfect, don't dwell on those days don't beat yourself up if you're not perfect for one day um but definitely celebrate those wins and make sure that you're constantly encouraging encouraging yourself and others to continue with Mm -hmm. those little wins right um we always say it's not about perfection it's about making better choices and like with clothing clothing is a big one right it's for a for a girl i can tell you it's close to impossible to find jeans that are made just out of cotton for guys no problem but for girls it's impossible to Why find. Is that? The stretch? Yeah, they always come with a stretch with elastin in them, right? Um, and so I can't be perfect when it comes to buying jeans. Yeah. It's hard enough to find a pair that fits. And so what I do is I try to find the one that has the highest cotton content, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And sure, it's not perfect, but if I buy good quality jeans that are gonna last me a lifetime, then why not, right? Try to do the best that I can without really beating myself up over it. Awesome. So, so that was repairing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I feel like it's hand in hand with maintaining. Like yeah, maintaining if you have a for sure. Or a phone or anything or a car, maintain yeah. it. Just take the time totally. to mm-hmm. maintain it. Yeah, we've uh, we've lost that knowledge of what things actually cost over or the value of things, yeah. right? And so for us now, our phone broke. Huh, I'll buy a new one, right? It's not a big deal. Well, not even the new iPhone comes out, so I need the new one. Yeah, oh. right. But if you are constantly thinking about maintaining your things and maintaining them well, then they're going to last you a lot longer and you're not going to need new ones. And that goes back to not needing as much money because you're not buying all these things, yeah. right? And the other one that kind of mingles in a little bit with, um, with the repairing is the uh, repurposing, right? So if you have a shirt that you can't repair anymore and it has too many holes, you can repurpose it into cleaning cloths or you know yeah. something else, right? Um, so you don't have to throw it away right away. You can at least give it a second life as right. well. So is repurposing the fifth R or does it go hand in hand? It just kind of goes repair? hand in hand with repair. It just happens say. to be another R. Yeah, yeah. it just yeah. happens to be another <laughs> We're R. We're it on. <laughs> yeah. So it's the fifth one, the fifth R. Recycle. Yeah. Right. So recycling should be your last resort. Recycling is a business, like we mentioned before, and it shouldn't be it shouldn't be your scapegoat. You shouldn't pick up a plastic package and go, oh, there's a recycling number on it. I can recycle this. Mm-hmm. I'm so smart. Right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like we said, recycling isn't really recycling. It's downcycling. Right. right? Two, three times, longer. two, three times. And you know that this is eventually going to landfill. So it's not a solution. So recycling should be your last resort if you can't refuse it. Right. 
um, then it should be at least uh, recyclable at the very least, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, recycling should be a, a last resort. Yeah. And the other thing that is not very well known is that even though we put all this recycling stuff into our recycling bin, only about 4% of what we put in there is actually getting recycled. The rest is still really? going to the landfill. So we do it because it makes us feel really good to put recycling out, but it should really be your last resort because most of that stuff, if it gets contaminated or if it's not the right number or if it's the right, the wrong color, right? If it's black, um, most of those things will just get sorted out and, and sent to the landfill. And you don't know about it, right? Mm -hmm. You right. put it out on the curb thinking I'm doing the right thing, but in the end, only 4% of what you put out there actually right. turned into something else. Again, out of sight, out of mind. Exactly. Another great term is uh, is wish cycling. No. Wish cycling. Yeah. Wish cycling, right? So you take something and you put it into the recycling bin and you really wish that it'll be recycled. Uh, yeah. Right? So, yeah, Sorry. but I mean, yeah, like, like Paula said, right? If, if things aren't cleaned out properly, then there's nobody at the recycling facility washing all of your dishes. Your mom right. does not work at the recycling facility. Right. Right? Poor metal. Well. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, so you think what are what are the things like when recycling? What are the things that that people should know with regards to this will totally mess up the whole purpose of recycling? Yeah. So like, you is there certain materials that just completely did, kill the batch? Yeah. Definitely the plant-based plastics that we were talking about, right? People think that they can throw them in the recycling bin. Interesting. So the all the eco plastics and cause you, you plastics can see them all, right? Like the straws and the bags and yeah. the forks and yeah. the spoons. They get restaurants and they're they're called eco plastics or plant-based plastics and whatnot, right? Mm -hmm. They cannot be recycled with standard recyclable plastics. Really? Um, mm -hmm. Say you have a hundred pounds of plastic and you have a piece of eco-plastic in there, it's going to spoil the whole batch. And now that 100 pounds of plastic needs to go to the landfill because oh. it's not recyclable anymore. Mm. So that's yeah, huge. Eco-plastics cannot be recycled with other um, plastics, unfortunately. Um, so that's a big one for sure. And yeah, dirty containers. Yeah. So anything that is contaminated by food, especially, um, cannot be recycled. So yeah. uh, the the one that you hear the most about is things like peanut butter jars, right? If you haven't cleaned your peanut butter jar out completely and some of that peanut butter gets onto paper, it'll destroy a whole ton of paper, like a no literal idea. ton. One yeah. tablespoon of peanut butter will destroy that whole ton of paper, right? So it's deadly. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone out there clean everything that you have before you recycle it. Yes. Is there materials as well that, that cannot be mixed together? Well, um, yeah, that's the whole point of yeah, separating. Yeah, the, the more you can separate, the better. Mm -hmm. um, and the more you know what your municipality recycles, the better. Yeah. Um, so the CRD, the Capital District, uh, Capital Region District, has some conflicting information because really depending on one, what municipality you're in, you're allowed to recycle certain things but not others. So right now some municipalities will accept glass while the rest won't anymore. Right. So really knowing what your municipality is um, accepting is a huge thing. So definitely try to inform yourself a little bit. If you go onto the CRD website, it'll tell you a lot uh, as to what you're allowed or not allowed to put into your blue bin. Cool. Can you describe to us how much waste we actually produce as people worldwide? North America, Victoria. Canada. Is too much the right answer? Is that, is it, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Is, that is the answer. That is the answer. Um, is that the answer, Alex? <laughs> around Canada, the statistics uh, say that we produce about three kilograms of garbage per person per day. Whoa. That's a lot. That's a three lot kilograms. of garbage. Per day. Per day. So do the math. Times 356. No, I don't want to do that. People do. I'm going to cry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's too much. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that's why refusal is your, your, your best weapon. Yeah, and as I was saying before, in Canada, we have the resources to be able to deal with all that garbage and to be able to deal with all that recycling. But if you think of third world countries where that is not an option, three kilograms all of a sudden becomes 30 kilograms, yeah. right? Think of all the compostable items that you're putting into your green bin, right? All the recycling and all the garbage that you're using in one single day, all put together, right? It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot that's, of stuff. That's, that's too much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, it goes, goes back down to yeah. It we're we're producing too much garbage and not really thinking about it. So, we talked about five R's now. Yeah. yeah. What's the sixth one? The sixth one is rot. 
So. Right. I forgot about that one. I yeah. forgot about that one too. Right. So if you're going to acquire things, um, they should at least be able to break down and return to the earth at the end of their life cycle. So glass, metal, wood, natural fibers like cotton, um, if left to their own demises, will return to the earth and they will essentially compost, right? Yeah. So yeah. They will return to their elemental uh, factors back into the earth and, and can be reused um, by our ecosystem. So um, rot and food scraps as well, right? So try to purchase things that not only start out healthy, but will last a long time and will return to the earth at the end of their life cycle. So rod is your last, uh, your last R in that equation. Yeah. And you have a, all this, uh, on your website is a huge source of knowledge. And you, what, what can we find on your website? First of all, what is your website? Yeah. <laughs> so our website is zerowasteemporium.com. Um, and we have kind of a list of resources. So when we first started our Zero Waste journey, uh, we found it really hard in Victoria to get started and to go to places that would allow you to have to, to bring your own containers was actually non-existent. Very few, few places would allow us to do that. So when we started sharing our knowledge with others, we put together this resource list with all the places that would allow us to bring our own containers. And we got people through social media to tell us where they had had good experiences, right? Mm. And so we started adding to that list and, and, and really getting input from the community to create this list of places that will allow you to bring your own containers. That's awesome. For anything from faux, like mm. going to restaurants <laughs> right. and actually bringing your own container and saying, hey, can you put my food in here so I can go home and eat it? Um, to places that will allow you to put meat, in, meat into your own containers um, and milk and all sorts of other things, right? Um, so yeah, we have all of that on the website and we also have a recycling page. It's uh, Recycling 101. So it uh, has a little bit of information on um, some of the resources that you can find in Victoria to be able to recycle, uh, especially hard to recycle items and links to some of the websites and companies in Victoria that will recycle um, and take a lot of the, the garbage that we can't put into a regular uh, garbage can. Yeah. There's tips and tricks as well on how to get started and, and best ways to go about it. Yeah. And what if people don't live here in Victoria? What is a good resource to, to search on the web or in their own community? Um, there is a lot of blogs and websites out there uh, right now. As the zero waste movement is growing all throughout the world, um, you will find blogs in almost every city and uh, podcasts and websites um, on how to kind of get started and what resources you have um, within your own town, right? So definitely uh, looking at your municipality website uh, or your town website, uh, they'll tell you what resources and are available to you uh, when it comes to garbage and recycling and stuff like that. Um, and then places or websites like Zero Waste Home um, have a lot of information and a lot of uh, really good tips and ideas. Um, and the person that put that website together, her name is Bea Johnson, and she's written a book as well called Zero Waste Home that is quite amazing because it shows you or it teaches you how to start your zero waste journey without making all the major mistakes that we all yeah. make at the beginning. And this book is in our resources tab. Great. Um, yeah. And she goes throughout the world speaking about her experiences with zero waste and how her family of four now only produces one mason jar of waste a year That's between crazy. four adults, which wow. is absolutely insane. Um, and, uh, so she has a lot of resources of what she's seen all throughout the world and everywhere she goes, she will find places where she can continue her zero waste lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so she teaches you about all these places, right? So, oh, awesome. um, that is a great resource. Uh, yeah. And have. they're on her website. Yeah. yeah. We'll link the website in the show notes <laughs> if anyone is interested. Um, you guys had Bea Johnson here coming, didn't you? Yes. Uh, so before we started our kind of zero waste grocery store, uh, we brought Bea Johnson for two speaking events to Sydney and Victoria and meeting her was quite amazing. That's, she, that's like, it gives me like goosebumps thinking like you guys met her. And yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah she, uh, she's very much a down to earth person, yeah. very blunt as mm -hmm. well. 
Um, and she'll tell you things like they are. Um, and at first, you know, you think of her as a celebrity, right? Like she's yeah. this awesome person that goes around the world speaking about zero waste and she's, you know, just so perfect. And then you get to talk to her and she's just another human being like anybody yeah. else. Um, and she was very, very helpful and very encouraging. And in part, we opened the zero waste store with food because of conversations that we had with her throughout the weekend that we spent with her. So, yeah, um, yeah she was quite an inspiration and, and quite it, w- it was quite uh, motivating to spend a whole weekend with her and, and talk with her constantly. So besides her, are there any figures that you look up to? your main kind of motivators or people that you try to mimic what they do? I'd say Paula. Paula <laughs> is my motivation. Oh, oh, you know, it's so it. sappy, oh, right? Wow. No, it's amazing. She keeps me in check for sure, right? That's so, awesome. I mean, as a man, it's easy for me to forget my bags at home or, yeah. you know, a, a produce uh, produce sack and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't like being scolded. So If you have a partner, that is key. Exactly. Holding each other accountable. Yeah, holding like teamwork, with, teamwork makes the dream work. You got yeah. it. Like you with Gabby, bro. Exactly. Yeah. We've been way more, uh, what's the word? Productive? Productive. Uh, it's game, game <laughs> it'll come to it'll, you. It'll yeah. come to me. We've just been more aware. That's the word. Yeah. Mm-hmm. More aware of our consumption and mm-hmm. and what we consume. And if you're aware, that, yeah. I think that's the first step. Totally. Absolutely. That's well, the key, right? Once you start realizing that there are other options out there, and start realizing what you've been doing so far and how you can change it, then yeah, it, it really makes a difference and it helps you kind of see what you can do, right? Yeah, and you should always lead by example, right? Yes. Changing mindsets is never gonna work if you're just gonna mm-hmm. stand on a pulpit and preach, right? You can't be preachy, you can't be judgy, you just have to lead by example. And cool. when people see what you're doing or how easy it is, um, then uh, they tend to join in. So it's a lot of fun going to the grocery store with our stainless steel containers and we roll up to the, the deli counter and we pass them over and people kind of look at you sideways. They're like, you can do that? I can do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, where, you can, you can do you that. Where get it? Yeah, yeah. Where, these where are, can I get yeah. that These container. are really cool. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you know, and, and again, that's another thing that, that I've really enjoyed through this whole movement is it, it creates and forces connection. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a, I'm a huge introvert and, and I, I, you know, Doesn't not a like huge it. fan of <laughs> it, it deep down inside. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, um, but, uh, it, it forces that connection. You have to talk to the person on the other side of the counter and, and you get to, you know, a little bit of a reprieve and, and, and a connection with the, that individual. So, and it forces you to go new places as well. So rather than just frequenting Costco where you don't need to put any, uh, thought into what you're doing or anybody around you you can just put your blinders on and go through it you know you got to go source out your cheesemonger you got to go source out where you can get you know zero waste uh you know protein from and uh you know you can go to zero waste emporium you can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you're yes. forced to talk to the man behind the counter yeah <laughs> yeah but it builds relationships within your community too right yeah. and it's another another lost art right which is it's so important right we're, we're all built on on connections right so and the beauty of those connections as well is that you are creating awareness to everybody around you, right? Like the first few times that we brought our containers to the meat counter and we said, can you put the meat in my container? And they're like, okay, yeah, let me just uh, grab this plastic bag. I'll grab the meat with a plastic oh. bag. I'll weigh it and then I'll transfer it into your container. And you're like, mm, you're missing, missing the, the point. point. You're going to miss the point, right? <laughs> and then they're like, oh, I see what you mean. You want no plastic, right? And then you start talking about it a little bit more, right? Uh. And there's some people that are really quick to catch on and they're very keen. Mm -hmm. And then there's others that are not as happy to help out or just don't care. Um, But eventually, little by little, that'll be at least in the back of their minds. And hopefully one day they will change. So we talked about your store. Where can we find you? Yeah, so um, you should definitely come visit us. We're in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, of course, for everybody that's listening. Um, and uh, our address is 1728 Douglas Street. We're right across from the Hudson Building that houses the Victoria Public Market. Um, and we're always uh, online as well, um, zerowasteemporium.com. Uh, we have an Instagram, we have a Facebook uh, account. And uh, we're up far too late working all the time. So feel free to nice. message us about anything at any time. And yeah. we, we'll get back to you eventually. Oh, yeah. ASAP. And when you walk in there, it's just another atmosphere. There's so much 
kind heartness and everyone just wants to talk to you right. that's how we met yeah it's a different way to shop it's yeah. you know it's it's amazing the love and support that we get from people that come in and you know they walk in and they're like it smells good in here <laughs> or you know what a peaceful calm way to shop or yeah. you know uh yeah it's it's been amazing so to see people walk through the doors and a few people have almost been close to brought to tears when mm -hmm. they come in because they kind of have that realization or that epiphany that, you know, I can shop without, you know, the burden of all, all this waste or, you know, I've been waiting for this for years and, yeah. and, and thanking us. It's, it's really humbling and, and also inspiring. And that's what keeps us going as well. So, so how yeah. long have you guys been operating? Here? Yeah. Well, the store has been open for six months now. Um, but Paula and I have been doing this for just over two years. Yeah, just about two years now. Yeah, <clears throat> it's a big journey. It has been. Yeah, um, it's been an incredible journey, and we've made some amazing connections. As Naren was saying, people really want to talk to you, and for us, because this is a passion, we just we need to share it with people, right? And we need to share that passion with everybody. And so we make a point of talking with everybody and making it as comfortable and as convenient to shop zero waste as we can make it right and and really try to inspire others as much as we are inspired by them so we've gotten to know some really incredible people at the store and we love seeing you know people returning on a weekly basis my mom <laughs> yeah, yeah probably just want, just want yeah. new faces yeah absolutely new mm -hmm. faces for mm -hmm. sure yeah so it's been it's been a really cool journey and with a lot of surprises that we didn't expect at all at the beginning so what are your plans for the future hmm. plans for the future at this point, um, just continue to grow and, yeah. and see where we go. We're, we're in this spot for the next five years. Um, so growth is not something that we can do too much within the store itself. Um, but maybe within the next few years, there's been a lot of people constantly saying, you know, when are you opening one in Sydney? When are you opening yeah. one in Langford? When are you opening one in Saanich, right? So I know that the demand is there. And I think one day we will get there. At this point, we're just trying to figure out how to run the business. Neither one of us had owned a business before. Neither one of us had worked in a grocery store before. <laughs> so we're still learning as no we go. Business. Like, it's crazy. All of a sudden, you need to know how to run a business. Yes. Yeah. And there's so yeah, much, fast. so fast. much to do with the business behind the business, right? It's not just having the doors open and, and, and helping customers, but there's so much more behind the scenes that yeah, we totally. never expected. Yeah. So, and there's lots of growth too. Like people are asking us for things all the time. And if, if we can get them in zero waste or, or local, even better. Um, so we're constantly bringing in new products as well. So yeah. within our walls, we're, we're growing, we're growing and, and expanding and, and we're, we're testing new ideas too. So, you know, one of the big requirements for us is, is being able to get it um, either with uh, no packaging whatsoever or, or recyclable packaging, right? Yeah. Something that we'll, we'll compost um, as best we can, right? So um, it's tricky. Those challenges um, have been a lot of fun too. And it's great when people come in and ask the hard questions as well, because you know that they're that engaged mm -hmm. and they want to know, right? Um, that, uh, that that holds us accountable as well, which is really great. Well, I think you guys are doing a really good job with this business. And I think Thanks. others are, other people think you guys are doing a really good job. Thank and you. I know you guys won an award. Yeah. Didn't you? <laughs> so good. Yeah. Because we did yeah. touch about this last time, and I really wanted to touch on it because I'm like, you guys need acknowledgement for what you guys are doing. I think people should know about your message and the problem that you guys are trying to solve. So what, what, what was the award? It was Ecopreneur? Ecopreneur of the Year. So yeah, um, last November, we were nominated uh, for two awards, uh, one of them being the Greenest Retailer uh, in Victoria, and then the other one was the Ecopreneur of the Year. Um, and yeah, we were, we were honored with that award. We didn't quite expect it. Um, but yeah, it pretty much honors um, people in our community that have created businesses and gone out of their way uh, to be more environmentally conscious um, mm -hmm. and try to change the mentality within the city, right? So yeah, so it was, uh, it was really fun. It was a really fun night uh, of meeting a lot of really cool local business owners. Yeah, that are doing um, so much environmentally and, and to impact... Um, you know, the community around us as well. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah it was amazing. I'm so happy. And I think you guys <laughs> are, doing, are contributing very well. Yeah. Very yeah. strongly. Yeah. Because yeah. 
Look at me. I like. I want. I'm so stoked about this subject. I'm leaning in. I want to <laughs> tell me more. I'm speaking into your microphone almost. And I, I was the same the last time that we guys talked. Because Manuel mentioned that to me. He said Brody was so stoked. He was getting out of his seat and he in your face. Like, tell me more. <laughs> and, I, and I just caught myself doing the same yeah. thing. And that is great. And that's that's what we love seeing in people. Is is that kind of light bulb that goes on, and then all of a sudden it becomes a passion. Mm -hmm. right and it's like it's all you can think about in mm -hmm. everything that you do throughout the day it's not just when you're out eating or when you're at the office it's all of a sudden everything every decision that you make throughout the yeah. day now has this spin to it of right am i producing waste by doing this and how can i change it right yeah. so and there's no going back from it either yes sorry <laughs> no, there is true. no, no going back. Dark side. i've never once been able to force myself into yeah. a takeaway coffee cup oh mm -mm. No, oh, yeah. I die it's inside. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You just you you just can't. It's you become accustomed to yeah. your new. Yeah. Way of being. I found the word. You're conscientiously thinking all the time yes. about it. Yes. You're being yeah. mindful. Right. Yeah. Mindful. mindful. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Self-aware. Yeah. 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 Um, one of the dangers, however, of this is that becomes it bec because it becomes such a passion, um, and you want to do it all at once. It can become really overwhelming. Yeah. So make sure that. If you're starting to think about the zero waste idea, start slow. Start with things that don't change your habits too, too much, and then start building on it and start looking for those little wins. Right. Because if you try to do it all at once, it becomes really overwhelming. You are asking yourself to change everything that yeah, you do throughout the day. Yeah, your whole lifestyle. Yeah. And especially if you're doing it with, with a partner, if they're not quite on board, asking them to change their whole life can be really, really overwhelming, right? So start slow, find those little wins that are really, really easy, and then start expanding on that. Okay, so I have a question. Do you guys sell sardines at your store? We do not sell no. sardines. Because that, that, my girlfriend Gabby loves sardines, and that was the one thing, that was the, the item that she returned because it came in, it was a plastic yep. covering yeah. and then tin foil container. So yeah. I know you can buy sardines, um, in, um, tin. Yeah. yeah. In right. Metal, right? right? Yeah. Wrapped in a cardboard package oh, okay. at least. So okay. cardboard, tin, both, um, you know, recyclable, mm -hmm. um, and that can be infinitely recycled provided you wash out the tin, of course. Mm -hmm. Wash um, it out. Okay. And then, um, <laughs> potentially maybe, uh, a glass. Yeah glass jar of sardines haven't seen one but i mean if you go to a fishmonger then you're probably gonna have better success at finding a higher quality item uh, in better packaging than than wrapped yeah. in plastic so it's about making better choices right and if you have if anyone out there has any questions like this like about a product about sardines about <laughs> <laughs> about anything um feel free to contact paula and aaron yeah, yeah please do absolutely yeah they're so friendly. Yeah, we're they, here to help. They won't buy it, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Not that hard. No, yeah. no. I just have two more questions because I'm starting to think about having children. How do you deal with, uh, for example, like you said, with children and That's allow it. them to get out there and... That's exactly it, is by leading by example and, and showing them the, the consequences of um, what happens if you don't think about your waste right yeah. um yeah lead lead and educate yes. those are the the two biggest things right and then i mean you can't you can't force people to do something that they're not willing to do mm -hmm. um because that doesn't inspire change in in them um but of course kids are products of their environment a little harder if you have older kids and you've decided to make this this shift yeah um but uh, kids are pretty forgiving, you know, they're, they're not going to, you know, give you up to the old folks home just because you made them, you know, <laughs> do, without, do without their bear paws in their yeah. lunch, right? But yeah. no, kids are, kids are a product of their environment. And, and if you in, inspire and, and, and yeah, you, you don't treat it like something that you're neglecting them from, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, then they'll just, they'll, they'll adapt, they will. Yeah, for yeah. you, uh, for you guys, because you're just thinking about having kids, I think it'll be easier because your kids will already grow in that environment where waste yeah. is not a thing. So they just don't use it. They don't need it. They don't, they don't want it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, for people that have older kids like us, uh, when we started this two years ago, our kids were used to having, you know, candy wrappers and, and bear paws and granola bars and all of that. Right. Yeah, so fruit gummies and yeah. yeah, but I mean, they, they adapted really quickly and, and in less than a year, um, we were hearing from their mouths, oh, I, 
I, I shouldn't take this because it's wrapped in plastic. No. Nice. Yes. And it's, it, it's, proudly. Yeah. Oh, it's huge. It's just inspiring. <laughs> That's right? a massive but one I mean, right there. Right? Yeah, but it doesn't happen all the time, but you, you have to celebrate. You have to celebrate them as an individual, yeah. 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 right, for, for making that conscientious decision, right? So, yeah, I mean, they're, they're yeah. always watching. And there's, there's always alternatives, right? So, so we stopped buying candy that was in wrappers, right? Mm-hmm. So instead what we would do is we would go to Bulk Burn once a week yeah. and we would give them each a mason jar or a bag and say, okay, this is your snack for the week, choose wisely. <laughs> and then what we found as well is that instead of getting home and eating the whole thing, they knew that that was their mason jar for the week and they cherished it and they (laughs) ate it very slowly and they really valued it right and so that also changed their mindset when it comes to the value of things right and how much they really wanted that candy and how much they wanted to make it last yeah all right i have one more question and it's with regards with regards to technology Mm -hmm. Uh, so in this world we are surrounded by technology Mm -hmm. and we are surrounded by this movement to go for electric power and electric power the uh, the main source of is lithium for for a lot of the things and now there's there's even cars teslas they use lithium and other car manufacturers and no one knows about lithium with regards to how harmful it is to to the to the environment and how much water it takes to produce lithium so just We'll put we'll put all this info in the in the show notes, but it takes five hundred thousand gallons of water to extract one ton of of lithium out of this planet. So, do you have thoughts of any of that? Yes. So, um, lithium, just like oil, petroleum, it's a natural resource and it's a limited resource, right? Non renewable, non renewable resource for sure. Yeah. So. So even though um, it's been great for making batteries. Um, and some of the lithium is being reco- recovered through recycling programs, right? Um, it's not something that we should rely on 100%. And, 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 and as a society, we should always strive to find something that is better, something that is renewable. Um, and I think Honda is coming up with... Um, well, Honda's uh, had a, a hydrogen fuel cell car for a while now. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe they're the only company. Um, but, uh, you know... There's no stopping the electrical movement that yeah. we're on now. Um, we've all jumped on board and, and we've invested in this. So, um, and of course, I think it was Petro Canada just announced that they're going to be putting in um, charging stations in all of their um, gas stations. So, yeah, there's there's no stopping this uh, this monster for sure. But uh, with time, there will be advancements, yeah. and those advancements will lead away. From uh, lithium, I know that there are companies that are working on it right now. Mm-hmm. Um, alternative battery sources, um, so. And hydrogen is definitely a good one. So with, with lithium, it's not perfect. It is a better option to oil, yeah. Um, but yeah, it isn't perfect. So there definitely will be technology that advances and hopefully eventually goes towards a more renewable source. And I think that it comes now with repair if you have something that uses lithium like your phone batteries and everything like that take time to repair it and maintain it and take care of it mm-hmm. in order for to not put it in the landfill at the yeah. end of the day and if you do end up having a phone that is not working anymore or something with a lithium battery that is not working anymore make sure that you're taking it to the right place to actually yeah. get recycled so that mm-hmm. lithium is not being lost to a landfill but it's actually being recovered yeah. right and not just the lithium the glass and the metal that are within your phone as well those are all consumable and recyclable items that can go on and be used for something else just right? like an electronic so. shop or well, the return to depot will will take yeah. old electronics, right? So yeah. Yeah. and a lot of cell phone companies will take the cell phones back specifically for that, right? Because it's a lot easier for them yeah. to recover the lithium and the batteries exactly. that way. So try to look for those phone companies that actually take back. Will take back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. I I have one more question. It's mm-hmm. kind of away from the zero waste movement. What do you guys like to do in your free time? <laughs> free time. Well, yeah. uh, we just. Uh, we just had a conversation. We were just going uh, rock climbing the other day. Yeah, so we try to do a lot of things um, that kind of build on experiences, right? So we're very much outdoorsy people. So 
um, we'll go caving, we'll go hiking, we'll go rock climbing, um, diving, diving, canoeing, camping, camping. Yeah. If camping. it's, if it's outside and, and, and it's away from, from people, we love it. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. There's the introvert. <laughs> Me. Yeah. Oh, the introvert comes out. I mean, I love people. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, no, the, the more that we can do physically, um, and in, in the outdoors, uh, the happier we are for sure. Yeah. And do you think that your passion of being in the outdoors, outdoors, your passion for zero waste was, do you think it was derived from it because you're out there, out there and the outdoors experiencing how awesome it is and you don't want it to ruin that. Yeah. It's definitely That's a good. catalyst. Catalyst. There yeah, you know. for yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. I, I heard a quote, uh, it's you, <clears throat> when you're having children, we are borrowing the planet from your children. Is that you? You said it last time. I think I think I said something in around that line. Yeah, is you, that it's only... yeah, it's it's much better to look at it in the in the sense that um, you know we haven't inherited this earth from our ancestors. We're yeah. simply borrowing it from the next generation, which you know puts you in accountability of you know what are you going to leave behind, right? Other than your organic material after you're gone, yeah. right? What what legacy are you going to leave behind? Because people aren't remembered by what they say. It's it's what they do. That makes a, a true impact mm-hmm. yeah yeah and and do you want your kids to ask you one day hey you knew about all the garbage and you knew about climate change and what did you do to change it right what are you going to tell your kids at the end of the day are you going to say oh i just ignored it or are you going to say i tried to make a difference even if it was just me i made a little bit of a difference right on the rate that we're going when our kids are going to be our age it's probably going to be well it will be an even bigger issue unless Absolutely. we make a change right now. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I love the, the quote that says, you know, oh, it's only one straw. Seven billion people said. Oh. Mm. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, one person can make one hell of a difference for sure, without yeah. a doubt. Yeah, yeah, especially if we all do it together. Each individual action becomes a huge action in the yeah. end, right? So... Yeah, the more people that can kind of start thinking about zero waste or, and, and it doesn't have to be zero waste, but just reducing the amount of waste that you're already producing, right? Yeah. Just having that mindfulness and conscious um, ideal that you need to stop producing as much waste, mm-hmm. then we'll all make a difference. Producing one sense. little win every day. Yeah. One right. little win every day. Right. And one celebrating win every day. And it celebrating so, it. It feels so good. Yeah. Because I know people, when they listen to this, they're going to feel the same way that I did. And just, well, just be more conscientious. Because after a conversation last week, I was so switched on and I'm still so switched on about my consumption. And, and she's like, look at me now. Yeah. yeah. It's, getting, it's getting easier. For sure. For it sure. doesn't have to be a struggle and it doesn't have to be a, a, a headache or a heartache. Mm-hmm. Um, it's getting easier for sure. Mm-hmm. Which is encouraging for us as well. Yeah. yeah. And having people, people like yourselves, giving our the resources for making it easier for us is yeah. Awesome. And you guys that are interested, <laughs> yes, right? We're so like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and your, your audience, audience. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. But, well, thank you very much for everything. Thank Thanks. you for recording yeah. a second time. <laughs> Thanks and, for having us yeah. back. Yeah. And yeah. Almost <laughs> back and almost a third time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we started the recording and then all of a sudden I was like, wow, that looks kind of weird, funky, yeah. and it was the same thing, but. Just, it looks like it's good. Yeah. yeah. Good check, Maddie. Golden. Yeah. It's all no. golden. Thank all you for good. having us back for sure. We Thanks, really guys. appreciate it. And we'll definitely have you back and back and again and again because I feel like once you hear something, you have to continuously rem- get reminded of what is important. Yeah. Constant education, right? Constant education. Yeah. We'll Absolutely. adventure through knowledge together. Yeah. yeah. Well done. Good well one. Done. <laughs> yeah. Right, well, thank you for listening. And if you have anything again, contact Poland and. Bye, guys. Bye. And please remember to be active in your community. <laughs> Brody, come on. Remember, remember keep, going, keep going. Remember to, remember, to, remember to smile. Remember to be kind and respect yourself, others, animals, and a beautiful planet. And please, never stop adventuring for knowledge. Until next time. Peace. Thank you.